it's very ABC. The, the, the difference is, it seems to me, between that and religion is this. Religion can order good people to do bad things. That's the surprising thing. We'll say um, you are to consider your homosexual friend less than human. Mm -hmm. uh, you are to consider women to be an inferior creation. Every monotheism says that at one point or another, sometimes very emphatically. Um, this, these are not helpful to our evolution at all. In fact, they gravely retard it. You are to mutilate the genitals of your children, for example. You are to regard infidels as people who should be enslaved or killed. Mm -hmm. um, this is, it's, it's the wickedness that's preached by religion that intrigues me. It, it, it's so often assumed that, oh, well, the Ten Commandments are at least okay. Well, look, there's no society ever been known where perjury and theft and murder are highly prized. And there were many, many human societies long before the mythical events that are supposed to have occurred in Sinai. We don't need uh, God to tell us that. It takes the same God of Moses right. to order uh, and license and give a warrant for slavery, rape, genocide, right. and mutilation. Right. I know. I, I don't think we do need uh, God to, to tell us, in a fundamental sense, to be good. I think that there, there are various intuitions that you and I would both endorse that are natural, um, and, and indeed there are ethical premises that people everywhere happen upon, regardless of how divergent their, their religion. So it's, it, it, you know... Uh, so it's it's hard to attribute that to um, certainly to any one religion, but I, I think maybe where we differ is the question of whether religion is necessary to do bad. You're right that religion can order people to murder. Well, so can nationalism. You know, so can anything sure. that has that is that is uh, given moral force by people who subscribe to it, and everyone attribute moral force to something pretty much to something they subscribe to, and when they kill people. They justify it in those terms. Of course. What's not clear to me well, people, is that... Well, people do have a tendency to decide that violence is justified in their own case, but if you want a, a, right. a, if you want a multiplier, for indeed for racism and nationalism too, if you say that this, this uh, nation or race has God on its side, I mean, every as you know, the belt buckles of every soldier in the German army that uh, organized Hitler's genocidal imperialism Mm -hmm. The belt buckle reads, Gott mit uns, in German, yeah. God is with us. Um, it's a huge multiplier of what might already be latent in possessive, acquisitive human beings. I, I think well, you'll find course, that's consistent across the board. Of course, of course, most American soldiers were probably believers, and their courage during the war, that very same war, was probably sustained by the belief that they would go to heaven. And I think you would say they were on the right side. So it seems to me that in that case, it's certainly far from being the case that religion was on balance, uh, you know, no, I, I mean, and, would, and yes, of course the Americans would, won. That's true, but it would support my point that this is man-made, because it can't possibly be that God was on both sides. Well, certainly man-made. Christopher, you're not going to get, I'm not, a, you know, you're not going to get an argument with me about that stuff. No, I'm not the trying question, to pick one. It's, it's well, an under, I, I want to get back to the, the subtitle of your book, How Religion Poisons Everything. It's just not evident to me that it does. So what, well, what I do think you a, say? I think, no, I think a religion, I think that religion makes good people consider doing or justify doing bad things. And I also I'd add that it often makes very intelligent people say very stupid things. And it also often makes people do very good things. What do you say about someone like Martin Luther King, or I think we'd both say did very good things, who, who presumably was sustained and fortified by his religious faith? Is that not an example of religious belief well, doing good? Without knowing the man, I, I can't be sure of that. I know two things. One, that... Well, I, I would propose one thing, and I would say I knew another. I, I think it's highly unlikely that he would have been indifferent to the civil rights of black Americans if he wasn't a Christian. After all, most of the people who organized and started the civil rights movement were secularists. They've all been written out of the record now, but the people who actually organized the March on Washington, people like Bayard Rustin, famous social democrat, people like A. Philip Randolph, the great black trade union leader, right. Walter Ruther of the United Automobile Workers, none of these people were godly in the least. That's the first thing. I don't know. Of course you don't have to believe in God to believe that uh, African Americans have rights. Second, right. um, uh, it, is, it is tactically certainly true that in the conditions of the South at that point, you had a better chance of getting your voice heard and broadcast, and also a certain immunity if you were doing it from the pulpit, because it's the most Christian part of the country, and also because the justification for 
slavery in the first place, and later the segregation, was biblical. Mm -hmm. So it was a way of tactically turning the tables, but that only replaces the question, doesn't it? I mean, it was Christianity that brought this horrific state of affairs about. Third, I'd add, by preaching the Exodus myth, that was his template, he was always going on about mm -hmm. promised land, etc. We're fortunate that Dr. King didn't seem to believe what he said, because the Exodus myth entitles the oppressed and wandering people to kill anyone who gets in their way and take their land, rape their women, enslave their children. Fortunately, he wasn't a believer in the Testament. Well, a, a, that fact points to what I've noticed again and again, which is the exquisite adaptability of religion and, and the ability of people to selectively resort to Scripture to do either good or bad. In this case, it seems to me good. Um, I, I, I would say, uh, you know, in the case of uh, the fact that Christianity brought us slavery uh, and, and the fact that there were... Um, uh, secular people on, on Martin Luther King's side, of course, there were also very religious abolitionists. Again, yeah. I just, uh, it seems to me about 50 50 on balance in any event, the idea that religion poisons oh, not everything 50, is a 50, long way no, to not 50, but, 50, and, and, and no. I, and I, can, I, can I just ask you, are you saying Martin Luther King was not, maybe was not religious and cynically used the pulpit? Did I hear you saying that? No, I, 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 I wasn't him, and I didn't know him, so I don't know whether he was a sincere believing Christian or not. I mean, he studied Hegel and Marx when he was in college. Um, he had a lot of friends. Most of his friends seemed to have been um, secular leftists. Well, do I you don't know if he was himself. I don't, what he thought when he was alone, whether he really prayed and really believed prayers or answers, I have no idea what he... If he if he confined himself to praying, he certainly would have got nowhere. I well, I haven't that. heard you. No, just, I sorry, I just I have to say you're wrong about fifty fifty with abolitionism. Centuries of of Christian endorsed slavery, and then a few decades where yeah. a minority of Christians finally decide that this isn't intolerable. Um, yeah. uh, but the people who founded the American Anti Slavery Society, for example, Benjamin Franklin was a member, Thomas Paine was a member. These were not these were not believers. Um, the chances that you'd be a non-believer and an abolitionist would be much, much, much higher than that you'd be a, a Christian. And to this day, where slavery is officially practiced anywhere in the world, it's always with the authority of a religious text. Well, the, that's actually um, not, except in North Korea, which I would define as a slave state, um, which is a worshipful but pagan state, worships human beings. Um, well, generally, I, most I, slavery in Africa now is, is, is justified by the Quran. I, I mean, I would say two things about... Uh, Martin Luther King. One is, uh, yes, there were various secular people involved in the civil rights movement. Again, I don't think religion uh, particularly disposes you toward good. I'm not making that argument. I'm, make, I'm making the argument that it often does good, and so that the subtitle of your book, unless it's meant as hyperbole or as a joke, um, is, is, is overstated. Um, and I, I would say in the case of King, um, you know, uh, true, there were, there were many secular people, but... Uh, uh, he, more than anyone, showed, uh, uh, more than anyone I can think of, showed uh, the kind of courage that is uh, almost u uniquely invent evinced by believing that there's a good chance you'll be assassinated pretty soon if you keep speaking in public, and yet speaking in public. And that's the kind mm -hmm. of thing that a Christian can do because uh, they think mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're going to heaven. Now, secondly, I would say, you know, you... you, you 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 uh, entertain these doubts as to whether he's really religious, and of course that's convenient for your analysis since he clearly did good. No, I, I, I just heard, I can't, I I can't know. It. If I can just finish, if I can just finish, I have not heard you entertain those kinds of doubts about radical imams, who I would say are at least as likely to be cynically uh, using religion. But uh, but that's not a theme I've heard oh. you emphasize. Oh well, then you should have done. I mean, when when you hear radical imams saying to people. If you put on this uh, belt and blow yourself up and kill the Jews, the sons of pigs and monkeys, mm -hmm. you'll go straight to paradise. It's actually occurred in the minds of some people who've given up suicide bombing. If you're so sure of that, why don't you do it yourself, Imam? Why don't you? Of course, it's of course. I think that, au fond, at bottom, um, all religion is partly hip hip hypocritical and partly racketeering. I just don't say that it all is. Now, just back to King for a second. I don't know that he was a true believer. I can't know that. He, he, he was able to give sermons that would stir even someone like myself. I, I can say that much. Um, what you said about him, though, and his willingness to die for his beliefs could just as well be said, and was often said, of heroic communists. 
um, including in the South, by the way, where the American Communist Party's most shining record is in the civil rights movement. Uh, 